It's a pleasure to virtually meet you all. I'm uh, Ronnie Grossfeld in charge of Latin America and the Iberian Peninsula regions on behalf of Medispec, of course. And I would like to welcome, first of all, our guests from Asia, Europe, Africa, the Latin uh, American region, and uh, the Middle Eastern region. And between parentheses, a special welcome to Dr. Ahmed El, El Demerdash uh, that I saw on the list of uh, participants and I've known him for the uh, last 25 years. So I'm really uh, excited to see him uh, again here. Um, I, I, would also, uh, I would also like to welcome uh, Medispec sales, marketing, services teams and uh, our management. And uh, most importantly, I have both the honor and the pleasure to introduce to you with a warm, warm welcome, our guest speaker, urologist, expert in sexual medicine, Dr. Professor Araí Vela Mosquera uh, from Ecuador. She's a professor at the urology faculty of the... Um, I hear echo. I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, about Professor Araí Vela Mosquera. She's a professor at the urology faculty of the prestigious International University of Ecuador, a specialist in human talent in health, who created a continuous educational program called Sexual Medicine for Life, that is taught to health professionals and patients. She's also a member of the Ecuadorian Society of Urology, a member of the American Confederation of Urology, a member of the Latin American Society of Sexual Medicine, and a member of the International Society for Sexual Medicine. So uh, once again, welcome to everyone. And today's uh, webinar topic is how to correctly select patients for an erectile dysfunction shockwave treatment. Uh, the treatment discussed today is twofold. The, uh, first, the principles and current state of the application of low intensity shockwave for erectile dysfunction, and the methodology for selecting the correct patients using Medispec's ED1000, which is based on our multi-wave technology. That technology is proprietary uh, to Medispec and is unique because it has multiple points of reflection, which allows a deep and wide treatment area with an ideal power level, yet without pain to the patient. So today's webinar is particularly interesting since it provides hands-on experience as to what seems to be the optimal methodology for selecting and treating ED patients for obtaining the highest clinical results. Before we start, some uh, formalities. Please type your questions in English in the chat box section. Uh, towards the end of the webinar, we will allocate time for Q&A. The session is recorded and will be shared along with the presentation shortly after the webinar. During the webinar, everyone will be muted to avoid background noise. And I invite you to stay tuned by regularly following our social media posts as we will announce our next event very soon. And now I'm handing over the microphone or the virtual microphone uh, to Professor Ar Arai Vela. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. And thank you, Ronnie, for your words. And thank you all for your invitation. Thank you for believing. We'd like to give eternity to our loved ones, but death always happens before one can expect it. But what if we could find the secret of eternal life? Dracula is a Bram Stoker's literary myth based on Countess Elizabeth Bathory, a 16th century serial killer. She drank blood of about 650 women just to eternally preserve her beauty and youth. Count Dracula said, blood is life, and he was right. Endothelium is like the yin and the yang. Inside it, there are life and death. Everything goes well as long as endothelium is healthy. It regulates several functions, preserving cellular breathing. That's why we maintain our beauty and youth. 
When it is dysfunctional, it, it turns against its owner and vasoconstriction happens, then intima media thickness increases and finally atheroma formation occurs. So we age, we wrinkle and realize we have been dying. Development of new blood vessels occurs in two instances. The first one during embryonary period known as, as vasculogenesis. That is the initial creation of the circulatory system. Later on comes angiogenesis, the development of new vessels from pre-existing ones. Erectile dysfunction occurs because of a blood leak. When inlet pressure is less than outlet pressure, venoclusive dysfunction is divided into primary and secondary. Primary ED appears in youth and it is diagnosed around 26 years of age. Its main cause is deep dorsal vein disease. Secondary or late ED may present as an endothelial dysfunction or a structural dysfunction. Endothelial dysfunction's origin is often metabolic. It can become a structural dysfunction. Ischemia can progress and lead to fibrosis of the muscular and the endothelial tissue. For example, in hypogonadism, fat replaces cavernous tissue and smooth muscle. Fibrosis or apoptosis also occur. Inflammatory factors such as TGF beta 1 are involved. On the other hand, traumatic fibrosis may occur in the alpogenia, as in peroneous disease, or from chronic cavernal trauma, as in traumatic cavernosopathy. Ischemia is worse than it seems. Padua and McLean suggested that an hypertonic pelvic floor may initiate and perpetuate urinary symptoms, sexual symptoms, perineal pain symptoms, and gastrointestinal symptoms. The alpha-1 hypertonia is associated with ischemia and other chronic inflammatory factors such as TGF beta 1, and other endothelial growth factors and some interleukins. For centuries, the human being has searched for the formula of eternal life from alchemical elixirs to cryopreservation, tissue generation, the use of stem cells, cloning, and transplantation. Dozen shock waves have the principle of eternization in their essence. The shockwave therapy was born in 1970 with stone fragmentation, then orthopedic disorders and wound healing. 20 years ago, it was used in cardiology, angiogenesis. For the first time 10 years ago, Medispec promoted the first studies on erectile dysfunction with Dr. Vardy. He applied low intensity shockwave therapy in 29 non responders to PD5 inhibitors with a 72% success rate. Currently, low intensity shockwave is applied with success in gynecological and kidney diseases. There are several ED treating devices with different types of energy, electrohydraulic, electromagnetic, and piezoelectric. There are important differences regarding the wave penetration and the intensity of focal energy. It is most likely that the electrohydraulic technology is the one with most studies and scientific evidence. But how do we get a shockwave? The electrical energy generates an acoustic impulse from where a pressure wave occurs 
originating a shock wave that penetrates deeply and causes a biological effect. A true shock wave is focused and faster than the speed of sound. Precious rise time is fast. And it is followed by a low tensile phase with great penetration. A new proverb says, a butterfly flaps its wings in Ecuador and subsequently a storm thrills Europe, Asia and the rest of America. The butterfly effect explains that a sequence of interrelated facts in a chaotic environment produce unpredictable consequences. The human body is a chaotic system, so the cause effect determinism is impossible. Miracles exist in medicine, but chaos is not disorder. Etymologically, it means a whole. According to chaos theory, tiny things cause enormous changes. Then chaos is genesis. The wave effect has its own chaos. Low pressure phase results in the formation of micro bubbles called cavitation bubbles. These cause micro trauma, activating repair mechanisms with transmembrane protein signaling, upregulation of vascular growth factor, and nitric oxide synthase, both endothelial and neuronal. Endothelial cells are involved also, also those of immune system, fibroblasts, nervous and stem cells. Somebody is speaking. Uh, Joan. Okay. Uh -huh. Through a process of destruction and construction, the low intensity shock wave generate a considerable if, uh, effects in the short, medium and long term on the blood vessels, endothelium, smooth muscle, albuginia, interstitial tissue and nerves. Although we could suspect cellular trend, uh, clinical results are unpredictable. Nitric oxide is released immediately. 25% of my patients said they felt improvement on nocturnal erections after the second sessions of low intensity shock wave therapy. None of them were diabetic. <laughs> Okay. Are you listening to me, Ronnie? Are you listening? Okay. Stem cell chemattractant activates uh, circulating endothelial progenitors, which contribute to angiogenic process and repair damaged erectile tissue. Low intensity shock wave resulted in reduction in TGF beta one, an improved collagen production, allowing the fibroblasts to restore elasticity and expandability of the erectile tissue as well as diminish obesity-related pathological changes. It also improves blood flow and reduces cavernous fibrosis. Radical prostatectomy produces neuropraxia associated with the rise of the pro-inflammatory factors and the decrease of antifibrotic factors. Another mechanism for post-operative dysfunction could be the cross-section of uh, accessory pudendal arteries 
that leads to penis fibrosis regardless of nerve injury. Penis fibrosis results in a structural venous leak in about 35% of patients. Bacaglini's study showed no significant improvement in the IIEF, but Peter Bill's study showed improvement in both IIEF and erectile hardness score with statistical significance. Low intensity shock wave seems to increase expression of alpha-2 adrenergic receptors and simultaneously decrease expression of alpha-1 adrenergic receptor. This possible decrease in sympathetic activity may lead to easier smooth muscle relaxation. Maybe a good option for those with performance anxiety and pelvic floor hypertonia. Treatment with low intensity shockwave seems to be a philosophical problem. Preclinical studies are clear in their results, while studies are uh, clinical studies are confusing. Yet let's not forget we don't work with rats. We are treating men. And lastly, scammers should also be considered in this path. This complete Sokolakis review included 15 experimental studies related to ED and 44 experimental studies in the field of orthopedic, neurological, and cardiac diseases, as well as wound healing processes. There is little information of the number of shocks, the energy flow density, and the total energy applied. However, the results have been evident. Most of these studies were conducted on sick or sickness rats, sickness, mimicking idiovascular origins such as Goto Kakisaki diabetic rats and obese and hypertensive sucker rats or rats with cavernal nerve injury. Also, normal sprout dolly rats and natural aged wister rats. Some studies included in vitro application of low intensity in rat strand cells cultures, endothelial cells of human umbilical vein, and stem cells cultures. Regarding clinical studies, Borst and collaborators selected 11 clinical studies and five meta analyses. There was evidence of improvement in erectile function, but Yamakake reports no effects in Doppler parameters. Also found no difference between patients with low intensity shockwave therapy and placebo. However, there are studies with objective evidence of improvement in peak systolic velocity. Also, we have four clinical studies and meta-analyses evaluated uh, low in intensity shockwave for peroneous disease, and five clinical studies investigated low in intensity shockwave for chronic pelvic pain syndrome. Results showed a possible effect on pain in both diseases. The results of uh, ineffectiveness have always been affected by the small number of patients. Disparity regarding energy applied and a great heterogeneity of use protocols. Regarding peroneous disease, Post reports a small statistical in decrease in curvature and plug size in the low intensity shockwave therapy group compared to small increase in plaque and curvature in placebo group. In most of the studies, the low intensity shockwave therapy did not modify evolution of the disease. All trials showed pain relief. The fact that there are several protocols is not bad. It is logical. There are different expressions of the disease even in the same stage and at the same time of evolution. 
Chronic pelvic pain was relieved in patients who received low in intensity shockwave therapy in controlled placebo studies. There is a possible reduction of tone and spasticity of the pelvic floor. Professor Ilan Grunwald presented this year a prospective double-blind randomized and placebo-controlled study in women with bulbodynia. The response was measured with an algometer and validated scales. There was a pain reduction and increased tolerance only in patients with low-intensity shockwave therapy. It's likely that the release of anti-inflammatory factors, angiogenesis, and pelvic floor tone reduction are responsible for the relief. There are new protocols being tested for vaginal dryness and orgasmal dysfunction. With this experience, Dr. Lim recommends the application of low-intensity shockwave in women's chronic pelvic pain, and I am starting. Despite evidence and multiple studies, low-intensity shockwave is still considered an unauthorized and not recommended treatment. But treating men is different. Men are afraid. Each has his own story and experience. Spontaneity is the ability to, to change without an external stimulus. It seems that spontaneity gives freedom, but it has the burden of human feelings. I think this is one of the biggest problems in clinical studies. Indeed, this patient is naked, depending on his own arteries, without a pill, depending on his own sexual and human response. You cannot be spontaneously happy when you take an antidepressant. Preclinical studies have no dofts, but I've never seen a rat with partner problems or unemployment stress or performance anxiety or working night shifts. The failure of, their, of heterogeneity is an affirmation that we do not treat penis, but human beings. Sexual dysfunction is a symptom of a disease and the disease has to be remembered all time and treated even though it is psychogenic. On the other hand, male health is a profit-driven business. It doesn't exist for public health programs. Shockwave devices are part of aesthetic treatments in spas or misused in companies run by scammer who sell treatment also uh, to everyone with no scientific responsibility. It is an expensive treatment, and this causes sometimes fear. It's difficult to tell a patient that he will spend a lot of money and improvement may or may not meet his expectations. Doctors are not wizards. We have not defeated death. We are just guiders in a relief process authorized by the sick. However, correct evaluation can be magic in our hands. European guidelines are ambiguous and American guidelines consider the low intensity shockwave therapy still under research despite a recent exponential growth in the use of this therapy in, in the United States. Recommendations sponsored by the, by the University of Buenos Aires are clear when describing their results. They mention clinical improvement. Also, it comes clear that low intensity shockwave increases BD5 inhibitors efficiency, but without normalizing erectile function. But 
Is it normal to have erection even when there is not an ideal circumstance? Failure is also spontaneity. Automaticity is not normal, is not natural. European Society of Sexual Medicine insists that the answer is only based in symptoms, but there is hemodynamic improvement uh, also. So it mentions uh, variable effects up to 12 months, but Dr. Apple and his calls presented the results of 60% of patients maintaining improvement up to 25 months. However, there is no recommendation. So more than 20 years of angiogenic evidence have been not enough. In peroneous disease, there is pain relief without modification in the curve or the plaque. But could we interfere in the final evolution with the correct timing of the application? Maybe starting earlier. In chronic pelvic pain syndrome, there is pain relief, but it is unknown how long it lasts. You have to discard false negative seminal studies because it doesn't work in chronic prostatitis. During these five years with the Medispec ED1000, I have treated 97 patients with an 85% success rate. Uh, many errors in my way. I have learned to value singularity, to inform and to correlate clinical findings with ultrasound results. It is clear that men are not always honest in their responses. One third of my treated patients showed improvement in their Doppler parameters, but had no clinical response. The penis may be healthy, yet the patient may still have no erections. With this experience, I have designed an evaluation chart with parameters which I have noticed affect the diagnosis and the evolution. I base my evaluation on three pillars, selection, information, and validation. And after a clinical exam, I indicate a metabolic assessment and diagnosis, diagnostic penis, penis Doppler ultrasound. Nocturnal erections are important, are evidence or, of better health, even though its absence is not necessarily real. They may occur and the patient is sleeping. Duration of ED is important. Patients with more than two years of stable ED have worst outcomes they may report penis shrinking. Pelvic injury, uncompensated metabolic comorbidities, vascular or structural diseases, fibrosis, cavernous calcifications also worsen prognosis. I prescribe Tadalafil one month after before low intensity shockwave therapy. Alterations in cavernous artery, intima media thickness, diagnose systemic atheromatosis with sensitivity and specificity close to 90%. I consider Doppler a prognosis exam and, and a intima media thickness as diagnostic, diagnostic support. Treatment will be validated with post-therapy Doppler ultrasound. I recommend choosing a customized dose of intracavernous injection for both pre- and post-treatment ultrasound. We use Trimix. Trimix. It's easy to decide when patient re reaches my six points 
It is mild clinical and echographic ED. I give six sessions with 1500 shocks in each, daily or on alternate days. Compensated means a difference greater than 10 centimeters per second between the left and the right peak systolic velocity, but with adequate erectile response in Doppler ultrasound. It is also easy to say no. I do not treat clinical erectile dysfunction without ultrasound evidence or patients with shrunk penis. Neither those who have no response to intracavernous vasoactives or those with bad results in the Doppler ultrasound. My decision is always personalized. We must remember that decompensed metabolic diseases affect the final evolution. Conditionals are the classic non-responders. Here, I evaluate data not included as age, uh, another medication or stress, partnership, smoking, psychiatric background and sedentarism. A conditional yes may not be treated and vice versa. Erectile dysfunction uh, is a vascular and a metabolic disease. We must remember at all times that we are not treating penis. A satisfactory erection cannot be the only goal. That's why we fail. So low intensity shockwave therapy is ready for clinical practice. Are we? Why should we compare between these two? I'm always looking this comparison, absurd comparison. The low intensity shockwave therapy is a different alternative and cannot be compared to a pill. See how easy it is. The FDA approved a vaccine in an experimental phase without established protocols. Is the fear of dying more important than the need to live better? Without quality of life, eternity is useless. And here we reach the end. The wave effect increases nitric oxide production, undeniable. It also eases neoangiogenesis and neurogenesis, undeniable. Clinical studies have controversial results, but determinism in clinical practice is not feasible. Low intensity shockwave therapy is not a pill. It is another therapeutic option that brings spontaneity and depends on singularity. ED is a multifactorial disease and it must be diagnosed and treated in the same way. Before questioning therapy, we must protocolize evaluation. Someone said blood is soul. The scientific world continues to investigate the result of the low intensity shockwave. But what about the first step, the pre-treatment evaluation? Why spend time questioning the undeniable, the wave effects and the chaos of singularity? And thus, it will be easier to become Dracula and drink blood to eternalize our existence. This is all I have for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Arai Vela. It was a, a fantastic presentation. Muchisimas gracias. Uh, we are now yes. opening the, the questions and answer uh, session. 
So feel free to write your question in the in the chat, and we'd be delighted to transmit it um, to uh, Dr. Arai. So uh, I'm reading here a question. Um, uh, hi, you mentioned that you are starting to treat women. Are we able to use the ED1000 system for the, for the women treatments as well? Yes, um, I'm starting my experience with women, but what I have read is great. There are good uh, options and hope for women that cannot have a hormonal treatment uh, for their vaginal dryness. So I'm going to do, I'm doing it. I'm starting. Maybe in one year we can meet and talk about women. Okay, there's another comment here um, that says, thank you, uh, Dr. Ravela, for this important and innovative information. I would appreciate receiving more information on the use of waves in vaginal problems, vulvodynia, infections, dryness. So we are taking note of this and, um, and we should follow up on this. Uh, it's more a comment than a question. Um, there's another one here. Thanks for the great presentation. Can we find a copy of the PowerPoint slides somewhere? Yes, at the end of this uh, webinar, we shall be uh, broadcasting the, both the presentation and the recording. Uh, so you'll have the pleasure to read to read and uh, enjoy Dr. Zarei's presentation over and over again for eternal life. Um, a question here in Spanish. Excelente mm -hmm. presentación. He remitido mis pacientes postprostatectomía radical y han respondido satisfactoriamente. Actualmente estamos iniciando con prostatitis crónicas y prostatodinias. Mm -hmm. Would you like to comment on this? Yes, uh, um, it's great to work with, uh, with the ones who were, uh, who received this, uh, this surgery, enormous surgery, radical prostatectomy. And uh, it's important to start earlier because patients come two or three or 10 years later. And that's why we don't have any response. Perfect, thank you. Um, I'm reading more comments and questions. Wonderful, Dr. Arai Vela is one of the wiser urologists I know. We are so proud of her here in Ecuador. Thank you for this fantastic presentation. We are also very proud of you here at Medispec. So I can only Thank read you. this message. Another question, what is the mechanism of action in addressing CPPS? Thanks. Uh-huh, a uh, relaxation is the secret relaxation the hypertonia is diminished when you uh, bring new blood to the pelvic floor thank you uh, another comment here muy buena conferencia very good conference uh, a question how does low intensity shockwave therapy treat vascular leak thank you for a very informative lecture Thank you. Uh, when you increase uh, inlet pressure, you uh, increase um, new vessels, then the pressure is higher and you can push the outlet pressure. You can diminish your outlet pressure. It's uh, trying to return to original erection adolescent erection. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Dr. Arai. May I suggest that you turn off the sharing screen so that we can see you in, uh, in Zoom uh, in full, uh, full screen? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, another question, where or which, uh, no, I'm sorry, one more before. 
Do you test, uh, well, congrats, Dr. Vela. Do you test testosterone previous to LA LIST? Always, always. When a patient has a problem with uh, erectile uh, dysfunction, when any problem with uh, sexual dysfunction, you have to test testosterone. Perfect, thank you. Uh, next Metabolic, uh, sorry, running, but you you have to remember, and, and Dr. Rivero is, is uh, uh, fighting always with this, the penis is not just it, is a man behind the penis. So you have to treat the man behind the penis. In my case, uh, these are two separate entities. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next question. Uh, where or which platform will you be broadcasting the PowerPoint presentation? Um, it will be sent by email to all those who uh, so to hope to all those who registered uh, to this webinar. So um, it will be sent. Uh, and um, Dr. Forti, in case you don't get it, I will send it to you personally. Um, a comment from uh, Spain. Um, uh, enhorabuena por la presentación, muy buena. Very good presentation. Gracias. Thank you. Uh, another comment. Uh, excellent conference. Thank you very much. And I think that with this... Uh, well, Ronnie, can, the... can I ask a question from here? Yes, please. Dr. Ari Vela, so uh, we are all excited and thank you again for the lovely presentation. Uh, you mentioned the COVID-19 vaccine. And uh, we are wondering whether during this uh, period, did you see a, a, a rise in demand of people uh, asking for a solution for erectile dysfunction compared with the time before the, the pandemic? Uh, yes, uh, it's like a mixture of problems. Uh, you have economic problems, so people, wants to, to take the treatment, but they don't have money. But I am looking something strange. People that is getting the vaccine is also showing problems with their sexual function. Uh, then it is very important to speak with men in this right moment. But yes, people is in need, in need, but with lots of economic problems. No money, no money. Thank you. Our next product will be um, a money printing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Um, okay, I have a comment here in Spanish. Lo he utilizado en pacientes con uh, disfunción eréctil que ya no responden a inhibidores de, de PD-5 con buen resultado. I've already used it on patients with erectile dysfunction mm -hmm. that are not responding to uh, PD-5 uh, PD uh, inhibitors uh, with good result. Yes, those are my conditional patients is uh, you have to choose correctly because if you have this patient that maybe is a good candidate he's he's going to be a good responder to low intensity shockwave therapy but he has a, a bad uh, wife he has um, he's obese he has a decompensated diabetes you have to stop the indication and talk with this patient and solve his problems first and then give the low intensity shockwave therapy conditionals are very difficult to treat uh, is maybe uh, the group that demands more attention.
Professor Lim, I love you. Yes, I, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a good researcher. I want to, I actually want to uh, make a suggestion to you. I, I, during this COVID, I had a patient who received the, uh, the, the vaccination. And uh, a few days later, he developed acute erectile dysfunction. Uh -huh. Right, so uh, I would I would propose you should uh, investigate this type of patients, and uh, if you can gather enough, I only had one patient in this whole one year, so I cannot uh, make strong statements about it. But I've read from my colleagues that the the, the vaccination has produced uh, some yes. victim, uh, with erectile dysfunction, and I actually saw one patient exactly happen that way. So it would be a good research uh, project to do this if you have a lot of uh, 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 COVID patients or people going for vaccine in your country. Yes, yes, Professor. Of course, it would be an honor for me. Uh, I will do it. I have three patients and I have prostatitis, viral, viral orchitis. So it's incredible what i've been seeing with the vaccine mm -hmm. uh, which, which vaccine was it just to i won't say it here <laughs> <laughs> but you know ronnie i told you <laughs> okay I, I just wanted to educate the audience um uh, okay um right i if there are no further questions um uh, I would like to, to summarize uh, this session. So first of all, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arai, for uh, accepting our invitation. Uh, thank you very much for the entire audience for taking the time to listen to us, to listen to Dr. Arai and to our experience. Um, the conclusion is that with uh, the right selection methodology, uh, before, during, and after, there are means to reach uh, quite high results uh, using the uh, ED1000. So you mentioned 85% of success rate. It's a relatively uh, high success level and uh, we can attribute it to your methodology, uh, I believe. So um, uh, any, any one of the audience that, it, that uses the ED1000 and uh, wants to contribute his knowledge and experience is more than welcome to contact our marketing department and we'd be delighted to organize another webinar, maybe on a specific topic that can uh, interest other uh, doctors, uh, other users. So once again, thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias. Shukran. Uh, merci beaucoup. I don't know what other language to use. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor thank you. Lim. Hugs to all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you too, and bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.